today I am fortunate enough to be sitting here uh, in this beautiful uh, tropical environment at Soltara Healing Center with six-time Mr. Olympia winner, Dorian the Shadow Yates. Well, it's my pleasure to be here. I'm fortunate to be here as well. This is like a magical place, location, and Soltara itself. And I think it's much more appropriate that you named it Soltara Healing Center rather than the Soltara Ayahuasca Center or anything else because ultimately that's what it is and that's what's been going on here on on many levels. Uh, Dorian came here as a featured, I guess you could say, headlining guest for the past week. He's undergone uh, four ceremonies here in the Maloka and there's been a group of people from all over the world that have come to uh, to spend this time with Dorian getting to know him, of course, is a, is a treat and something that isn't a very common experience uh, for just for your fans. I've done ayahuasca before. If anyone follows my podcast and so on, they, <coughs> they know that. Um, and I've spoken about ayahuasca. The first time I spoke about it publicly was, I believe, 2013 with the London Real podcast. And... Uh, then London Real came here, and I saw Brian was here, and I said, hey, how was it there in Costa Rica? He said it was beautiful, the, the facility was great. And I said, well, I might be interested to go there and, you know, do the process for myself there. And I guess that's how we started talking and deciding uh, ultimately <clears throat> to put this Dorian Yates hosted event on uh, here at Soltara. So that's that's how the story unfolds, I think. And so what was the process like for you being here with all those people? And, you know, you mentioned you ended up becoming more of a mentor. Uh, what kind of, what kind of, I guess, uh, transformations or what kind of exchanges took place uh, during this week with, for you? Man, it's like, it was really a magical week. It's one of the most amazing weeks of my life. I was initially, as I said, coming here for myself to do the week, to do the, the process. And we spoke and you suggested why not come as a host. You have a lot of people listening to you and a lot of people that would be interested to do the medicine uh, with you. And at first I was a little bit cautious because I wanted to come for myself and I'm um, inherently I'm a, I'm a very kind of private person. All that might seem strange with what I had done being on stage in your underwear. But, you know, I was known as a shadow because I used to, come up and do these competitions and then disappear into my own world and concentrate on my training and just laser focus on what I'm doing and I had been to ayahuasca before and I really I don't tell anyone who I am if they know they know and I rather they didn't to be honest because I just want to be not that guy that you know um, at that point in time I just want to go through my own things so I was a little concerned how it would turn out but it, it, it turned out beautifully you know, they admire me. They came here because I was here and perhaps they wouldn't have done it if I wasn't here because, um, as they put it, they might have thought it was a bit hippy dippy or a bit weird or, you know, uh, Dennis comes here as an icon of the psychedelic world, but maybe they couldn't relate to that. It wasn't for them. So they came here uh, for me and they drew strength from my presence. Well, that wasn't a one way street as you know, it never is. Um, it was a two-way street. I drew, I drew strength from their stories and their experience, and we just developed as a group over the week that turned into one big family. And I've seen people come here and, and totally transform over the week. I mean, they even look different. Even the faces look different. Like the loads have been lifted off. And this is a healing process. This is not fun uh, tripping out like getting some visions on acid and mushrooms and having a good time, which is fine if that's what you want to do. You know, I've done that and it's, it's all good. Um, that's an experience in itself. But this is much, much deeper and it's an intelligence. The medicine is an intelligence from the plant beyond human intelligence, beyond anything we can understand. And it's not healing you just on one level. It's not on a physical level. It's not on a mental level. It's not on a spiritual level. It's on all of those levels. Um, and that's what's happened to people over this week. I've seen laughter. I've seen tears. I've seen probably lifetime friendships happen. I've done ayahuasca ceremonies before, but it was generally you, you get 
some instructions before you go there on diet and restrictions that you need to make in order to prepare yourself for this process. And then you do the process and the shaman does his job, uh, which is his job to do. And he works with the medicine, protects the area and works on individual people with his ikaros and songs. Um, but be here, but here the, the before care, the explanations of what was going on and what to expect. And somebody was always there to look after you or somebody was always there to care for you and make sure everything was okay. Uh, that I hadn't experienced before. They're there every day. They're there every night. I said, how the fuck you guys di did this week? And then I'm going to go away. And then another group's going to come in. And there was another group here the week before. So huge props to, to the people here that work at uh, Soltara. I love you guys. So it was above and beyond my expectations, the level of care from the staff and right down to the food and everything. But I had an amazing week and experiences and things that I'll take away from here. Um, I feel after one week, I feel refreshed as if my whole brain has been cleaned out of any kind of crap and shit. Uh, my physical body has had things happening to it. I've had inspirations, I've had insights, I've had psychic information coming in. Uh, it's just been amazing. Well, you were telling me earlier today that um, it seems like you're uh, getting, I guess, uh, premonitions of of events that 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 seem to transpire simultaneously. Yeah. Or I mean, I I'm, I was thinking just to give one example that I gave to you, Daniel. I was thinking something business related in the ceremonies, which happens. Your thoughts go all over the place. From you know, maybe you're traveling deep into space, or you. You know, you're in, a, you're in a different dimension, but you still get everyday thoughts coming in and pe realizations about people in your life that, uh, you know, maybe you need to make amends with or you see their perspective on things. Uh, so many things coming in. But one of the things was, I was just thinking about a business thing and I'm thinking about some situation that, oh, maybe I should uh, recontact these guys that I haven't heard of uh, or spoken to for three years. And okay, it was, you know, like a little check note noted, I will do that. I'm, the medicine is telling me about that. I'll do that when I get back. And you know, I got back to my room and there was an email from the very same people I was thinking of that I hadn't heard of for three years that literally must have come in at the same time I was thinking it. I mean, literally probably in the, the same exact time. Uh, tons of stuff like that going on. Um, so it's really an indescribable process. And I think... Um, out of the group that came here, there were only, apart from myself, obviously, there was only one person that had ever drunk ayahuasca before, and they had one night experience. They didn't find it positive. They weren't happy with it, but they were still curious. So all the rest of the group, they had, you know, they had no experience, and some, you know, had expectations. Some people thought, well, I'm here because my friend asked me to come, but. I don't know if I believe this process. And at the end of the week, these people are all transformed. Even the, the cynics were like, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm a believer, basically. We all have, um, I don't know if it's trauma is the right word, but we all have tr things, we all have issues that we would be better to process and clean out. And that's what I feel like. I feel like a computer that's hard drive has just been had all the crap that I don't need washed out and I can go back to the world and uh, <clears throat> my computer's operating at warp speed, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, you also had kind of a precarious first, the first time you had ayahuasca was obviously yeah. not done with, with any kind of structure. Not um, at all. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe it's a funny story that I should tell. <laughs> um, so, uh, I guess, you know, I'm very open-minded. I've always been a big believer in cannabis. I used to live in Amsterdam for a while, uh, so I was exposed to that world. And while I was there, I did a lot of reading, and I'd heard of DMT and ayahuasca. And I was on a trip to the Amazon in Brazil where I met my now wife, Gal, who was also here, who said never in her life was she ever having any interest in doing any kind of psychedelics. And... Uh, she saw how the process was here and how things were and it was totally different to what she thought it was and even she at the end was joining in and and taking part in drinking in the ceremonies and so on so 
that was fantastic. So anyway, uh, I was in the, the Amazon, um, I think this was about 10 years ago when we first met. And I was with some guides taking us down the river on a boat. And I said, hey guys, what's that, you know that stuff, I read about this stuff called ayahuasca, this drink that is supposed to send you on the spiritual journeys and you become a spirit animal and you get all revelations and all this stuff. And can you get any of that stuff? So the guy's like, yeah, I can get it if you pay me enough. So, you know, I paid him probably way over the odds to get this stuff. And he gave me two bottles full, which was, I mean, I know now was way too much substance. And I had no um, before care, no instructions, no shaman, no nobody there, nothing, which now I realize that, I mean, thank God I'm strong as a fucking horse. So that, that could have been a, a real problem. Uh, you know, it could have been really dangerous. And the night before that, as it was the phase I was in at the time before I met Gala, was like in a party phase, like making up for all these lost times that I, and things that I, I didn't experience during my whole bodybuilding career because it was total focus and dedication for like 12 years. So I was being a bit loose and we're drinking, doing a bit of a uh, few lines of coke out there in the in the jungle. That was the night before. So I went into this situation totally toxic, which now is like, I mean, it really alarms me that that happened. And thank God that nothing really serious happened to me. So that was the night before. So I came in with a totally toxic body, no knowledge, no instruction. And um, yeah, it was, a, it was a terrible experience. And after that, I didn't really have that much positive to say about ayahuasca. Um, later, a few years later, I did DMT, smoked DMT and had these crazy visions and went to different dimensions. So I was telling people, listen, fuck that ayahuasca stuff, man. That's no good. The DMT, smoke that. That's what you want to, you know, see. But now I realize, yeah, smoke DMT is okay because you do realize that what we perceive through our senses of a, as being reality is only a minute fraction of what's out there. So that showed me that. But it's not working on a deep, healing, life-changing level as ayahuasca does for people and everybody's experience with ayahuasca is totally different and sometimes you might have a hard night or a bad night or you might see bad things or you might be upset but later on you realize that this was all part of the process my first night here I was just like actually I was crying I was depressed and I thought Fuck, Lord, why has this happened to me like I never had the, like an experience like this with ayahuasca before but I came here with some shit that first needed to be extracted and taken out. And then the sex night, the second night was absolutely very positive and beautiful experience. So you always get, uh, and you always get what you need. And some other people have experienced the same. Like this wasn't good night. I don't know if I'm going to do it tomorrow. I don't know how many people I've heard. I don't know if I'm going to do it tomorrow. And I'm always shaking my head and smiling like, you wait till tomorrow. You're going to do it and it's going to be totally different. So yeah, that's how it, that's how it went. So this time around, you, I mean, I can testify firsthand because we were hanging out before the retreat, um, but you were actually quite disciplined when yeah. it came to the preparation. Oh, that's a walking this. apart from me, man. Discipline's my middle name. That's my life. And um, I have tremendous respect for the, for the plant and I have tremendous respect for the people that work with it. I mean, what I did is nothing. Uh, the shamans or the healers that work with the medicine, what they've had to do and what they've had to go through to become that teacher, to become that shaman is way beyond like anything I have to do. I mean, the, I don't know how many years of dedication and isolation and periods of, of uh, not even drinking any water and not eating and only eating one plant and being isolated from the world and all this kind of stuff that they have to do to become a shaman and to become and build that relationship with the plant so they can work together with the plant. And that's really the most important part of the process, I feel. I mean, you could sit down and drink some ayahuasca and I'm sure you'd have something going on, but without the shaman there to work with it and work with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis where they sing these acaros, which is basically vibrational songs that they do for each individual and tailored for what that individual needs and what their problems are and, and so on. And I've seen some, I mean, I don't even know what they're singing about, but I I kind of feel what they're doing for each individual. And it was a, it was just a beautiful sight where they could, I could feel them healing people from 
uh, healing their spirit, healing their scars, which which we all have from life. A lot of people, a lot of stuff in your formative years as a, as a, as a child, uh, and a lot of this stuff is buried in your subconscious. So if something's in your subconscious, it's like in a box in your brain. And you can't see it. You don't even know it's there. But yet it's affecting you and it's affecting your whole life. So somebody has to prize that box open and get all that stuff out. And then you're like, wow, how, how much better do I feel? Um, and you didn't know it was there. And now it's gone. And now you know it was there. So it's a lot of subconscious healing. I think uh, I think many people can identify with that, you know, and, and it's it's very commonplace in our society to avoid that you know and we have every kind of distraction and substance available to to keep that stuff buried yeah right without actually having yeah but uh, i mean all you're doing is numbing the pain mm -hmm. that's all you're doing you're not removing uh you're not removing the tumor that's that's there you're not removing this thing you're, you're just taking a painkiller so you don't feel that it's there but it's there and it's affecting you and it's not going away and we all have it um uh the, the first, after this negative experience that I had, which was because I was not informed, um, <clears throat> the first ayahuasca experience I had really with the shaman, and and people ask me about it, and it's indescribable, but how I could relate to them is like, imagine if you had a 20 years of therapy in one night. That's how it felt. So I think that's a pretty good description. Um, but you always struggle to describe ayahuasca and the experience because you've only got a human brain and a human vocabulary to try to describe to people what it is, and sometimes that's quite limited, and you feel like it didn't really, you're not able to really describe it as well as you want to. Were there any uh, episodes or, or periods or experiences from actually inside the ceremony that that you would want to share with the listeners or well yeah I'll, sh I'll share this one a lot of it and maybe it's personal but this one uh was revealed to me so um <clears throat> i i have with me a power that i've built or it's grown in me or it's i don't know anyway it's with me that was obvious in the gym i had a a power and people could feel it was palpable like i would go in a room i would fill the room with the power because it was just I would spend 24 hours of a day all year round just focusing on on this on on what I had to do in the gym and building that power so I had this power and somehow in my mind this power was represented by a lion and in my house uh I have lion paintings I have lion sculptures I got a lion tattoo and a lot of people that know me, they just call me lion. And, that you know, independent of each other, they don't even know why. They just seem to remind me of a lion, man. And, and in one ceremony, the shaman told me, he said, I saw you transform into a lion. I'm like, yeah, man, what the fuck is this lion thing, man? Do you know what this lion thing is? He's like, yes, I know. I'm like, so can you tell me then? He's like, no, I can't tell you because it's your path to find out what is the lion. So, oh, fuck, man, what is this lion? So I came here with this as well, and I mentioned it in my, you have a meeting with the shaman before any ceremonies, with the shaman, with a team, and it's one-on-one, -on -one, very private, so you can open your heart. That's what you're here for, to tell them what's, why you're here, what's your problems, whatever, you know. Um, so one of my questions is, what's this lion thing? And the shaman <clears throat> gave me a talk, and he said, you know, the male lion is the head of the family, and I said, sometimes I make lion roaring noises and growling in the ceremony, which I don't know where it comes from because he paid me to do it now. I couldn't do it. So it's only the, under the influence of the plant that this animal really comes out. And then I saw clear in the visions that the lion is the the protector of a lion pride. There'll be one male lion. That's His job is the protector. And I saw it that you're that lion and you're like calling your family which is people that want to go into the light. And you're there as a figurehead and like kind of mentor slash protector and a guide to say, it's this way. And I think that's kind of, that came to me. And then the whole group became my, like my pride of lions that I was like 
you know, I was at the front charging into the light. And uh, so that was one of my uh, experiences and stories that might be interesting. That's really, it's really great. You know, you can kind of come into the, come into your own power like that and, yeah. and, and uh, take ownership of that. It, it really is empowering. I feel, I feel fucking great, man. I feel like um, maybe things I've been procrastinating on, like as far as projects and work, they're like, the plants told me like, stop fucking about with it, man. Just get on with it and it's going to be great. And also we've got your back. So no matter how it might seem like things are going wrong or things are going bad, just keep the strength and keep going forward and uh, we got your back. So, yeah, I'm definitely feeling empowered to go and a few personal things um, I need to clear up with people and, you know, um, I wouldn't probably have done or thought about it if I hadn't been here. So that's also uh, fantastic. So you got some homework. Yeah, I definitely got some homework. Um, uh to do and that's what it shows you whether you're gonna um act on it or not it's up to you but you you've been shown yeah so don't waste your time man you, you came here for something and you've been given it and that's why i'm dedicated to the preparation beforehand uh, of respect and also afterwards of course i would like to go and smoke a joint and have a beer and a piece of chocolate cake but small sacrifice to make for what i've uh, got here and I'm aware that the plant medicine the plant spirit is still working with me for some time after this um, experience so I don't want to like short circuit it by you know throwing down a couple of beers it might be nice and tasty but I'll wait man um, so this is not a joint of cannabis I'm smoking here this is mapacho this is the natural uh, tobacco which I'm puffing on which is great and it's like also is used in the ceremony and part of the process so I'm not cheating, okay? <laughs> <laughs> did you did you see any parallels between your vast experience in uh, in, in bodybuilding with the work that is kind of being done in with yeah, ayahuasca? Yeah, because uh, <clears throat> the key cornerstone of my approach to my career in bodybuilding was discipline, and this is discipline, and the shamans have their discipline, which I respect highly. I mean, their process of being disciplined to become a shaman was at least as hard as my discipline to become champion bodybuilder and best six times in the world took a lot of sacrifice from me. So I can really relate to it. Um, uh, so I just utilized what I had before in a, in a, in a different way, but I, I can definitely relate to that. And <clears throat> people are going away from here with more discipline and more strength. Uh, the whole group, um, as I say, they're, they're a group transformed, and I'm sure there also um, will be lifetime friendships between these people because they've been through something together that nobody else can really understand or have been through. Even their, you know, they go home, their family, their partners, the things that the people that weren't here, um, they haven't been through this process. So they've already created a support group, and it's like we all go through shit in life. It's very easy to, when you're going through your own shit, you look at other people and you think, oh, well, it's good. It's okay for them. I wish to that. You know, I had their life because everything. I'm sure people look at me and think that, oh, Dorian's successful. I did this and it must be great. No, I go through shit. We all go through shit. But it's a lot easier to go through that shit if you've got a whole support people there that you can just, you know, call up or message and say, hey, I'm not feeling so great. And, you know, you lift each other up. One time I might be down and you can lift me up. One time you might be down, I can lift you up, and so on and so on. So it's great that we form that kind of community here. So magic stuff's been happening here, man. Almost like uh, moving forward together kind of thing. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, you got the strength of the group. You're not on your own. you got like 20 people that'll be in a group, and you're all supporting each other. And you get here, and you don't know who this guy is. You don't know who this girl is. And, <clears throat> well, maybe that guy, you know. I wouldn't normally get on with that guy or I wouldn't relate to this lady because I normally wouldn't come across somebody like that in my life. And by the end, we all realize that we're all kind of like the same. Oh, we are all great. the same. Yeah. Not all the same, but all one, so to speak. We're all one, yeah. We're having different experiences, but we have the same core um, thing, you know? So uh, if you were to uh, make, recommend to to your fans a, a good way to go about um you know preparing for ayahuasca 
et cetera. Um, what would you think the most important key factors would be? Well, I think the most important thing is to find somewhere where you're going to do it and you're going to have a professional care team there. I've done ayahuasca in the past and the shaman has, uh, has been awesome in my experience that I've done in the past. But there is very little before care apart from you get an email to tell you what dietary restrictions and uh, other restrictions, sexual and what have you, that you have to make to prepare your body and your mind for the ceremony. Um, but afterwards, there's also, there's, there is pretty much zero care. Uh, and I think that's very, very important. Much more so probably for um, somebody from the West. We live in a complex world of, of technology and, and the stresses and um, different things that we need to have care for. So um, you need somewhere where you're going to get that. And, and Saltara is the place that I would recommend because I'm not saying there's not any other places out there. But personally, I don't know uh, where they are. And personally, I don't have any experience of it. Um, most people uh, that I've spoken to that have done ayahuasca, they've kind of been stuck in a place and like a bunch of cattle um, because it becomes a money-making exercise for people, which nothing wrong with money, nothing wrong with business because if there's no business, there's no facility, right? So you have to run it as a business. You have to make a profit, but that doesn't have to be your uh, main goal and your main priority. And there's a lot of, um, greedy people out there now jumping on the bandwagon because there's a lot of curiosity about ayahuasca now that it's getting out there and you see all the videos on YouTube and, and, and so on. It's got people's interest, but there's also people that are taking advantage of that, I believe. So um, Saltara is a place for me, man. And, um, I will definitely be doing more camps here. Right on. Well, I, I can tell you that... Uh our staff, our team has made many comments about how much of a pleasure you were to, to have here on site. Of course, it's, it's been a real honor to have you here. You're a legend. You. And, you know, we've had uh, a lot of the guests who came, uh, including myself, you know, recall back in the 90s, seeing posters of Dorian Yates and like every gym I've been to has posters of Dorian Yates in the, on the wall. So, you know, it was... Uh, pretty surreal and pretty wild experience to have you uh come visit us and uh definitely you're welcome back anytime and it's I, happening man it's already happening i've already seen it so dorian yates camp 2019 is going to be here at least once that's all i'm going to say perfect well um so how do people how do people find you follow you and uh, and track well, you can your find me activities. on Instagram the Dorian Yates on Instagram uh, you can contact me through my uh, dy nutrition uh, dynutrition.com and you also can go on to saltara.co and I'm sure you're going to be posting up uh, pictures and news from from the the camp that's just finished and uh, we'll let everybody know when we decide that we're gonna organize another one so looking forward to it man right on thanks dorian thanks brother